matter who you are, where you are, what your choices have been, and what karmic timelines and contracts you have journeyed, the light is calling for the reunification of all aspects of life in this realm now. It is calling for the cleansing of all polarities. It is calling for the rising of all sacred heart centers now. All are being summoned home to the greater light now. Hi, and welcome to Whole Soul Mastery's Live Well, Live Whole podcast series. I'm Marie Moeller, and I'm an author and intuitive and a host of these podcasts that are all about, and they center around integrating the polarity and greater wholeness inside us. And I am back again today with Paul Panzica, who joins me, I'm so grateful, every month to have these conversations, to go deeper on the adventure I'm going to use your words, Paul, the heroic souls adventure. Many of us are feeling that we're being called to more see bigger and embody bigger. The hero, that rising hero, but the heroic soul, which is even more liberating. I can feel there's like it's, it, it's opening a pathway to the light at the end of the tunnel. We're in route in this process of this ascension. We're all still navigating the challenges, the tethers to the 3D matrix, the distractions, the misinformation, all of those things. And we are on the precipice of March 2022. It feels like things kind of seem to be accelerating, quickening. Some days, I'm sure some people feel like oh, it's taking forever, but in, in the day-to-day, -day, I think if we just look around our world, there's much that has accelerated in the happenings of our world. And I think our consciousness is rising in many of us to try and keep up with that. But there's a great chasm still between the world we live in when you have mortgages and bills and grocery shopping and kids to raise and all those things. And then this expansive etheric realm where the soul likes to inhabit and explore deeper truths and and seeking, seeking the light and understanding ourselves better as a humanity and rising in those higher frequencies to live and embody that more and bring it into this world that can be so dense and chaotic a lot of the time. So here we are back to talk about some things. And you have written a powerful blog post that just posted. I will link to that in the description of this video. But I want to talk about those things because I printed it. And just before we got on camera, you know, the last hour or so, I was reading it and I couldn't put it down like a good book. I was like, oh, like my soul was just drinking in your words and the things that you know, Paul. And I think you're here to language much of this for us because that's part of how the 3D matrix entraps us and enslaves us. And we're going to talk about that a little bit today is in the not knowing. It's when you're not tuned in, you're not seeking, you're unaware, you're more likely to be in the fishbowl of, you know, inside a matrix of experience and not know that you're in a fishbowl of that experience and not know the way out. And also you don't have the language. And when we don't, when the language is taken from us and we're, uh, I don't like to say it this way, but for lack of a better word, we're kind of dumbed down into this. We're funneled into this cultural conditioning where they keep eliminating words. They've done that for decades. And now just simple conversation, certain things on social media, you're not allowed to say, or you lose your platform. So before they were doing it in a more subtle manner, pushing and pushing and squeezing and squeezing and constricting us. Now they're just doing it very blatantly. But when we are losing our language, that's the bridge to the higher realms. That's how we sound and to form the pathways to freedom. And I think you're a languager of that, Paul, and I'm a languager of that. And I think we are both here to be seeding back into humanity's heart and awareness, especially as we enter the age of Aquarius, which is, I think, a more expansive energy, a more light-filled energy, a more truthful energy. But we're in like the the belly of the storm right so so thank you for joining me and i can i read can i read the first paragraph can i just just can i do that 
So this is Paul, and this is his article. We're going to link to this later so you can find this again. But the title is Goddess Athena, Mother of the Heroic Soul. We are now living in a new age, which is manifesting with the rise of the divine feminine coming back into balance. Throughout history, there has always been a third champion of truth and the human cause who makes herself present in the inner world of human consciousness. This is the goddess known as Pallas Athena or simply Athena. Pallas Athena is the virtually the only goddess who can stand up to the archonic deception and injustice as she was literally born into existence to do so. Like all the gods of the pantheon, her nature is synergistic to ascending people. Athena's true power resides within the human mind. There's a lot more, but I just like to call in her energy right now while we're talking. Because like even that, like my whole energy field is alive and deeply listening. You totally got, you had me at the first sentence. Like that's what I just, I got closer and closer. I could like, if I could crawl into this, I would. Because the world and the awareness you're painting for us is inviting us into a deeper awareness of what is tethering us, what is imprisoning us. And by going through the dark tunnels of that world, the hero ultimately finds its way out, right? Those are the right. gifts if you accept the call to the journey. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, I guess my inspiration for writing this was the season. And I, 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 I still go back to the astrology of what's happening. And, 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 and that, to a certain degree, inspires me to elaborate upon what's happening and how that can be integrated or linked to um, current events within our personal and, our, and, and within the life that we live in this world. Um, and so it was time for me to elaborate upon this aspect of um, ourself that I find interesting at around the same time, um, there are others who are saying very similar things. Um, but it's 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 the it's our time now to focus on this element or this aspect of who we are, and um, the season that determines this discussion is the winter season. And I I talked about this before about how that we were going through this what amounts to a crucifixion um, in four seasons, but it it was more of a transfiguration. You can call it whatever you want, but we were transfiguring the four bodies of, of, our, of, our, of our existence or our constitutional four bodies. And we talked about before when you, or we talked about the, um, the lion, the season of the lion in the summer, right? Mm -hmm. The lion's gate portal and how important that was for the etheric body. And then we talked about the, um, the transformation of the scorpion into the eagle or the transfiguration of the scorpion into the eagle. That was in the fall season. There's also other things occurring in the fall season and also in the summer season, but now we're in the winter season and we're, we're deep into the winter season. And um, I talked about something that was a little bit more esoteric, you know, as we're trying to link this now to the transfiguration of the etheric body and then the astral body. And this is simply the astral body is the heart. And now we're in the season where we're looking at the transfiguration of the mind, right? Of the mind. And, uh, and the mind is the ego, but we have given ego a very bad name and <laughs> deservedly so because we, we confuse um, true ego with false ego. And, and that leads to deceptions and problems, hmm. uh, which we might be able to go to later on. And I did talk about Aquarius and I talked about Ganymedes, who was, who was really the, 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 um, the, the wine steward of the gods and, and how that was associated with Jupiter and all of these interesting trans, trans, uh, transformational energies. But as you read in that paragraph, there's three of them. There's three energies. 
And, and the one that really needs to be considered is the one that isn't that obvious. So pair, um, these, are, these are considered to be um, Promethean energies, which mm -hmm. is really where the, the, you mentioned this in your last lecture. You talked about four truth, right? And I yes. said, well, there's, there's forethought. And then, and then, and the connection between that is this Promethean energy. Prometheus is forethought. So what happens to Prometheus is not very good, right? And so I, go, I elaborate about it in this essay as to what happens to Prometheus. But Promethean energy is altruistic. You know, it's like, oh, you know, let's save the world and let's do this, you know, like almost like at an impersonal level, it's Promethean energy, which is also the energy of Aquarius. Aquarian, Aquarius people are like always doing things or they're either psychopaths or they're, they're saving the world and, and they could be both. So, so, but they're, but they're out there and, and there's this impulse to do it on a big scale. Mm -hmm. a big scale, huge scale. And so that was Prometheus giving humanity fire and teaching humanity <clears throat> the qualities of, 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 of forethought, basically of the ideas of, of calculating things out and being able to look into the distance and being able to see outcomes. That was, that's Promethean energy. And for that, the poor guy was uh, enslaved or not enslaved, but he was he was chained to a rock. So I guess that's enslaved, and <clears throat> forced to live this perpetual life of, of um, torment. Of torment. But you know, if you really read into it, he's just sharing the same fate that every single person on this planet shares. Mm. It's, it's it's a metaphor for for living in the linear, the dense linearity of. Of, of, of this world of the of the material world and that's that's what it is and so <clears throat> that was one of, um, of of these of these champions of truth the second one was Chiron mm -hmm. and, and if you look at I mean, if you look at the the, the stories of Chiron Chiron is a very Christ-like energy in fact there's many correlations to Christ and Chiron and Chiron was a centaur and <clears throat> instead of just going out there and helping everybody. Chiron worked with um, individuals and, and you can say that his students or his apostles were people that, that became the heroes of our mythologies, <clears throat> right? It was, it was Chiron who helped them. Um, and he taught them, the, he taught them astrology, he taught them poetry, he taught them healing, he taught them archery, he taught them all these, these these more refined things. And so you have this, this Chiron. And, and, and so what happens to Chiron? Well, he gets injured by one of his students or betrayed by one of his students. And mm. that sounds a little familiar. And then um, he, in, 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 in the process of dying, he realizes that it, or, or it was realized that you know, God's the Titan Prometheus shouldn't suffer for eternity. It's not fit for him to do that. So what does he do? Chiron takes the place of Prometheus and sacrifices himself again and puts him into that place and suffers the same fate that all human beings suffer, again, living within this lower density construct. So anyone that helps us on a, on a, on a, on a significant way is I pay a steep price. Rock. <laughs> yeah, that is torture, right. right? That's that that is the fate of all of these, you know, higher powers that, that try to help us. Uh -huh. Now, why is that? Answer: It's because the world is ruled by archons. These archonic rulers that are the ones that um, won't, don't want things to change. And you can't mess around with, with the way, with, with the way that they've constructed their little hierarchy. And so if you do do that in a visible way, you're going to be punished. You know, you, there's many different ways of being punished, but you'll suffer, right? So then there's the third, let's say, um, a champion of truth or, or, or prophet of truth. And that's Athena. <clears throat> and Athena is... She's very stealth. Athena, it turns out that 
if you look at the pantheon of the gods, there's no one greater than Athena. She's the, she's the greatest of all the gods. And you maybe people could make an argument and say, well, Zeus is greater. No, nope. Zeus is her dad, but he feared her. So according to the legend, she, um, Zeus, Zeus was in a war um, with the Titans and it was called the Titanomachy, which is the war of the gods versus the Titans. Wow. And Zeus's father was, was Kronos, who was the head Titan, right? And so what happens is, is that um, Kronos swallows all the gods. This was a thing in the, our mythologies. So Kronos was afraid of his offspring, so he swallowed them all, he ate them. Um, and except Zeus wasn't, wasn't eaten because they cleverly disguised him and they bundled a rock, and so, and so, and so instead of swallowing Zeus, um, the the god Saturn or Kronos swallowed this rock, and so eventually he went to war to, to free his his brothers and sisters, and um, but in order to do this, he needed the help of these Titanic powers, and one of the Titanic powers that helped him was a was a goddess named Metis, M E T I S. And she instructed him on how to free his siblings from the belly of his father, which he, he did. And so um, in, um, after, the, after the war, after the Titans were vanquished, he took Metis as his first wife. They apparently had seven wives. Hera was the seventh. And so he copulated with her. And then uh, afterwards, he realized, oops, because they're, because uh, Metis's parents said, you know, any child that Metis has is going to be greater than you, Zeus. And not only not, and the first child will be will be a daughter, and then the second one will be a son who will be who will who will take your place as the kingdom of uh, as the king of the cosmos. Right? Oh, yeah. So he's like, I'm not going to let this happen. So he swallows. Metis, just like um, his, his dad father swallowed all of his siblings. Three days later, he has a splitting headache. And so he, it, it's, he, it's like his head is going to explode. So he tells one of the, the gods, the god, his name was Hephaestus. Hephaestus was also called Vulcan, in the, in, in, and he was the god of the forge and, and a blacksmith god. He said, strike my head with an axe because this headache is just so something's got to come out. So he strikes his head with an axe and out comes Athena. Oh, wow. But she's dressed, get this, she's dressed in full battle arm and she's full grown. And she leaps out of his head and takes her spear and starts pointing it at her father. Basically saying, okay, chain me to a rock guy. You know, you know basically saying, do it. Bring it on. Bring it on. So, so she, she's a goddess of vigilance. She's a, she can see further than anyone else can see. And so the, the, um, the prophecy was correct that the daughter that he would, he would sire was, was not born of the womb, it was born of the mind. She's, she's, she's a goddess of the mind, which makes her the goddess of not just ego. I mean, that's because that's been such a, um, um, a poorly understood word, but she's the goddess of the light of truth, which is the logos, which is the E, the ego, the capital E, ego. That is who we are, right? And so she's born of the mind, not only of the mind, she's born, born of Zeus's mind, which is like the mass, the divine masculine, but she's born of her mother. And her mother was wiser than Zeus. Her mother was the wisest of all god or goddesses until Athena was born. They don't ever really say what happens to Metis. I, I don't know if she ever makes it out of Zeus's body, but it's Athena who is the manifestation of all three of those beings, herself, um, uh, uh, her mother Metis. Metis is a metaphor literally for wisdom, but um, but uh, you know, a, a, of a deeper intuitive wisdom or a knowledge of the heart. Um, and so 
uh, Athena has the quality of being able to balance those masculine and feminine tendencies. Hence, she is like a masculine god. You know, she is, they call her the, 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 the goddess of war. And she, that's Mars, it's not Athena. She's a goddess of vigilance. She's a goddess of truth, divine truth and divine justice. And she does everything she can to protect that. Who she became subsequently was, a, was the muse a personal mentor, not just in an external level, but she was the she was the she was the muse of all of all of the Grecian heroes, all of them. So she was present, but within, and so she offers guidance to those heroes, um, and 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 uh, it's like a. It's like that little voice that speaks to you, you know, that inner voice, you know. So she is the one who, who gives wise counsel to those who are basically done living in the prison. They're the ones that that, that they're the ones who who well, what what is what constitutes the heroic soul? And you mentioned this in in your in your lecture that the last transmission that I listened to this morning, which is I guess is only a few days old. And you were even saying that as you were using the metaphor as a fish and the fish um, didn't, didn't matter where the fish lived, if it was a little pond or a river or an entire ocean, even the entire ocean is too small now for the fish that are living within its confinement. So you mentioned, you mentioned some beautiful things in that lecture, such as, um, uh, we we need to we need to we need to kind of like escape that matrix or, or that imprisonment. But one of the things that you said was so beautiful was that you can't really do anything to help anyone else at this point, except ascend yourself. And in the process of doing that, your energy bleeds into the presence of others. Right, so there's 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 a core group of people that are fed up. There's a core group of people that are done living this small life and this confined life. And much of what I wrote about is about that. It's, it's you just use a different metaphor or different analogy to that. But a person that's fed up with that has lost their fear of death. They don't mm -hmm. care about what's going to happen to me because. I, I'm done with this life. You know, this was this was like what the Cathars were like, you know, and this was like what the Gnostics were like. And this is like the great heroes who go into battle are like. They they don't care because they understand that this is an illusionary existence, right? So sh when you get to that state is when you can hear Athena's voice. Wow. Right? When you get to that state is when you can hear Athena's voice, right? So the, those are her children. So they, even though she's a she's a virginal goddess, she's she never had allegedly had a lover or took on a husband, and they and she never had a child per se, because it's not in it's not in the it's not in the lineage of the gods or goddesses, you know that she ever had any offspring. But that's not true. She's had millions of us. Us. You know? Yes. Yes. Those who she mentors are her children. And they're being, they're, it's, this is all a birth of the mind. This is really the most exciting aspect when I realized this, that this is where the true transfiguration of the ego is occurring now. And, you know, you've mentioned it many times, but we can't ascend without this presence, period. Mm -hmm. You know, you, it's, you need a spiritual presence, but you also need wise counsel. You also, see, it, it, all, it all connects back to Genesis. I don't know if you had a chance to read that, but, but you know, Genesis is really kind of crazy if you read it, because <clears throat> there, it's right there in the third chapter of Genesis when the Lord finds out that Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of knowledge of good and evil is simply your capacity to discern 
deception from truth. Yes. That's what she instills within our life. Is there Can I read a paragraph? To... Can I read yes, what you sure. say about that? Yes. You say discernment, otherwise known as the knowledge of good and evil, is a quality of the mind that is God gifted. A soul can learn discernment through the spiritual realm or by the wisdom of their own experience, but cannot acquire it through conventional instruction, various forms of teaching or virtual platforms. This inability to gain wisdom is because one's insight is limited due to lack of experience or a direct connection to their higher spiritual self. There is a chance that a person can gain insight through personal mentoring, but only if heart-centered love is exchanged in a state of grace between the pupil and the teacher. I thought that is the most beautiful and brilliant explanation of discernment that I think I've ever heard. It comes alive. It like lifts off the page, right? It's a living energy, this discernment. It is God-gifted. And yet few practice it because in the metaphor of the fish, they swim with the salmon, not thinking they're like, oh, everybody's going over there. So I will go over there, but they're not thinking, hmm, where are they going? Do I want to go there? Is that for me? Right? No, people don't do that. And only with like a catalytic experience, something that shatters your previous patterns of following everyone else and beginning to ask the questions, this knowledge of good and evil. Wow, yes. that's bigger. That makes that whole Genesis story so much bigger. Yes. Because yes. we are talking about something that is relevant to us now, this discernment, yes. right? It's not yes. just the polarity, it's the discerning between the two and finding the zero point, which I think you talk about somewhere in between. Yes, yeah, yeah, the, the it's something along the lines of the <clears throat> the um, I am the I am the the I am the light I am the life and I am the way <clears throat> right and oh, so, yeah <clears throat> so that's that's a very important passage I am I, I mean that's that's in, that's in our Bible and the life the, the life and the way yes Jesus says that he says I am the the light the life and the way so. Um, or it's not so much the light. He says, I am the truth, the light, the life, the truth, the life, and the way. But he's talking about the light of truth. And then there is the life, the life. So the, the light of truth is the logos. The, that is a logos energy. It's the divine masculine. And then the, the life is what the Gnostics call the Zoe, the Zoe. And the Zoe means the life. It's our libido, it's our life force. It's the divine feminine powers. And then the way is, is, is balancing those two energies. Understand, Athena is balanced, extremely balanced because of her lineage. Her mother was the life and her father was, was literally the logos or the light of truth. And so, so that's, that's where that zero point balance comes in to play. And, and so, yeah, that's, that's, that's what that is. Um, right. Yeah, but it, but going back to the Garden of Eden, please. Right? And so you have this um, this. What happens is is that Adam and Eve eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right. Now, if you had an enslaving group of rulers, they're called the rulers or the archons. Then you you know you don't want them to know too much. You want to keep them you know less intelligent than you, so that you can sub subjugate them to your will and to your deceptions. Does this sound familiar? Yeah, it sounds real familiar right now, right? Because we're we're being bombarded with deceptions, and they're doing everything that they can to try to hold on to power, but. <clears throat> When they find out that Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, or they were now able to understand, that, you know, we're naked here. I mean, this is not, this isn't cool. And, you know, and so, so, so they got real upset. And then they said, well, you know, they ate from the knowledge of uh, the, 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 the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If they eat from the tree of life, 
they will be greater than one of us. Now, explain this to me. You have a monotheistic um, religion. And what is, where is this term? Right, it's right there in Genesis. What do you mean one of us? What does that mean, one of us? And so the way that, you know, the, um, the conventional uh, religions used to explain that away was it's the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one of us. That's BS because the, the Holy Trinity doesn't care. You know, I mean, the Holy Trinity is trying to establish a path so that you can ascend your consciousness into their realm. They wouldn't, that doesn't, that not, that makes no sense. The only way that that can be interpreted is that, that this is something that was left in Genesis that basically um, proves that there are, these, these are arconic energies that were trying to limit our capacities for truth. The Gnostics always made that claim. They always said, look at look, this universe that you're living in, this world you're living in is a false reality. It's an illusionary world created by these, think of them as the dark entities or the dark aspects of the planetary bodies that rule us. You know, because all the planetary bodies have both light and dark aspects. In a lower plane of consciousness, that's what they are, they're rulers. In a higher plane of consciousness, they're energies that are actively alive within you. And then, and then, and then you, with those energies, help to uh, achieve your goals and co-create co a, a greater reality, a greater, a greater world, ascending the world into a heavenly state. So here you have you know, these, these, these rulers right there in Genesis, one of us. And so that clearly, clearly indicates that um, you know, the reason why you were forbidden to eat from that tree is, is so that we can establish a hierarchy and control you and rule you, right? But there's a lot of people coming forward now, whether they're, you know, all these people in, 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 the, wisdom, in the wisdom community are basically saying, look, the universe was designed for you to escape from. Correct. Right? It wasn't, it, it's, it, it wasn't like, if you just sat there, you know, and you could watch the whole thing from a, from a couch, on a monitor, right? That's what most, most people want to do, you know, or, or get up for like a half a day and do a couple of things. And, oh, I've ascended, wonderful. You know, that's not, that's not how it is. You have to, you have to, this is a, this is a, this is a lifelong journey and, and you have, it's a struggle, right? And it requires it, it, participation. It requires full participation, full participation. And without spiritual guidance, specifically without the energies of Athena, you simply are, um, you know, a, 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 a player in the backdrop who becomes basically another victim. You you have no chance of escaping, you know, their evil plans unless you have assistance, which is greater than their capacities, and that's right. where this Athenian energy stems forth from. So brilliantly said what you just said. The assistance basically has to be otherworldly. Think about it. If you were trying to get in a boat, you're going to outrun them or outsail them. Like they control the seas at some level. Like there's nowhere where you can go. It's just like there's nowhere you can go where the light doesn't touch, right? The light touches everything. But the same thing is true about these darker forces too. You can't get away from it. You have to transcend it. Or transmute it, or transmute or, or, or it, or transfigure it, right? So you know, it's always it's, it's always the same thing. You know, what, what's more scary, a, a demon that you empower that's a hundred foot tall, or one that you disempower that dissipates to six inches tall? I mean, you know, and they they're always going to be there, but they only can live off of your life force. Mm -hmm. If you don't give them your life force, they 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 dissipate their power. It dissipates their powers until. They're ineffective. They, they can't have any effects upon you. And once you can see past their deceptions, which is what Athena's energies give us and Promethean energies and Chiron's energies give us, we can see past the ridiculous games that they're running right now in real time, which are just false. They're just- they're Just a false. projection of what they just want you to think they are and right. what they want you to think that you are. 
it's exactly. both, it's like projecting themselves as larger than life when they're really like this tiny little cockroach exactly. or something exactly and, and, right and then they might want you to think that you're the cockroach like that you're this little thing that can't defend itself or find a way through that right they invert everything and they pervert everything so their sense of justice is perverted justice and their sense of you know um, um truth is perversion of the truth so everything so do they that hide behind the energy of a serpent is like that serpent part like well there's serpentine energy in who they are right i've never like does chiron and prometheus and athena how does that square off with like the biblical serpent story or that's well, serpent right, so, their uh, minion <laughs> so, so you know um, athena athena is associated with the serpent serpents are wise yeah. so it depends on it depends you know Dragons can be adversarial beings, or they can be very wise and empowering beings. It depends on what, what perspective you're looking at them from. Understand that all adversarial energies catalyze our transformation. Mm. Otherwise, we'd still be living in mud huts someplace and we would never have ascend, we would never move forward. Right. right. So, so even Zeus plays that role. You know, it turns out that um, um, Zeus, Zeus's favorite child is Athena. He loves her more than anyone else. Wow. He adores Athena. Even though she came out of his head pointing a spear at his face. He respects that. Is, that. He loves her for that yeah. because, because it's a champion of his blood that ultimately will assist humanity. Zeus doesn't hate us. He never did. He's just, there's, there's different aspects of, of the God that, of the external God that we've created, and he's playing that role, you know? So, so the, you know, and he's actually, and I wrote about this in the essay, the God that we look at as the external, you know, masculine God is two-faced. It's, it, it, it can be a loving, nurturing, you know, um, God of justice, or it can be a God of wrath you know, and thunderbolts and power and, 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 and rage. So where does that come from? What is that? Right. And so the answer is there's actually two gods there. Um, one God is, 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 um, is, is Kronos. Remember he defeated his father and in defeating his father, he, he took on all the karma of his father and he became like, he became like the, the ruler of the universe, but his father is still part of him and is still within him. So, so that's why there's this, kind of duality that exists but fathers you know what's the role of the father is to create structure the role of the father is to give guidance the role of the father is to empower his children to all of the world's challenges and you know what you know we always blame god for for the situations that we're in or zeus or whoever they want to blame you know you're only responsible for your for your life god's not responsible for your life you know, you decided to come into this life and have this experience. And, and in the best realm, fathers are there as, as, as guidance, as, as, guide, as guides. And you can do it in a stern way. You can do it in a, a loving way. But you know what? If somebody doesn't create structure or offer structure, you know, or, you know, uh, inspire people to become more heroic than they are, then fathers are useless. And that's what they, they're doing in this day and age is they're neutering all of us. They're destroying all of the fathers so that father figures are no longer you know, politically correct. And so they, they lose all of their power related to that. You know? but, but again, Athena was his favorite. He loved her more than, than all the other gods. One of the other things I just wanted to say, which is saying what a lot of my transmissions bring through, it's an echo, it's like a, it's a very similar vibration. But you say, in a very truthful sense, all knowledge is connected to the living light, the life and the way of the divine father, mother of the living spirit. The living light is the logos, the living life is the Zoe, and the way is the path of love that integrates and balances all living energies to zero point, which we already talked about. Above all else, love and I am unity consciousness is the ultimate master of this tradition. 
And then this is the sentence I really wanted to say, because that's really powerful. There's a lot to just, you know, that's like a map right there. The living light is the logos, the Zoe, the way. But then you say the way is arduous and will never be given to any true seeker, let alone another living soul, unless one is determined to overcome the obstacles, deceptions, ignorance, and ex existential challenges that the ruling handlers of our human imprisonment set forth in front of us to, net, to negate any progression to our soul's liberation. I mean, you just have to look at our world. Even if people don't see through the lenses that we see, if we just look objectively, people's websites and social media platforms and voices are being silenced if it's counter the narrative that at least one group of people on the planet believes is should be the only way. That is so powerful, right? We have this, and you, in your language, you would say all that, those challenges and the arduous nature of the hero's journey at times, it's designed to require us to grow to the next level. So in the best of it, we're being squeezed to grow because we know that's our destiny. That's where we're headed, right? That's the path is the greater version of us. But so many people feel the initial squeeze and then they find a way to wiggle out of that or distract away from it, you know, bury it somehow or acquiesce to these archons as you describe them, right? Or the serpent, you know, we both use these metaphors. It means a lot of big energy. There's a lot of energy behind what we're saying. But a lot of people will just, um, you know, submit consent and duck their heads down because they don't want to be the person that pops it up and could have their end because of that. You know, I, and, and I think there's something in that that I just want to bring into this conversation, which we always touch on, Paul. But for people who, you know, there's a lot of people in the world, I don't know that I ever use this language. Maybe it's why I'm more comfortable in the challenges of my life is that a lot of people just want a nice life. Like I just wanna have a good life and I wanna retire and I want my kids to be happy and prosper. You know, it's like this very basic, but that's also part of like the Kool-Aid they've been feeding you that is like saying that's the ultimate goal of life is that you have an easy life. But the soul doesn't really desire an easy life. The soul desires experiences and growth, right? Which automatically summons in the challenges and the obstacles and you know these the rods of fire being thrown at us by these archons or whatever and the more you can realize in the theater of this whole big show that's going on we are all destined to grow through this at some point or another to get to this i don't know if it's the other side because i think we always keep growing right there's not just this side or that side it's just continuous evolvement but I want to speak to that in people because there's, I know a lot of my listeners are in the arduous nature of the journey. That's why they seek out and, and are attracted to the transmissions that I bring through because they are the ones doing the work, finding that zero point again and again when they're pulled in the storms this way and that. They right their ship and they, you know, and they need that strengthening those those messages that fortify them in the journey to yes keep going you're doing an amazing job and some of us are going to keep going and we're making the path behind us that some people might just say hey there's a path here right some of us are making a way for that but still people have to choose it and what i want to say is we've been so conditioned to not want to do the work to want an easier path that's not where the marrow is. That's not where the meaning, that's not where the passion, that's not where the life force is. This, the mundane, like you said, if we didn't have some of these villains, I guess we could call them the archons stirring the pot all the time and feeding off our life force energy and having that thing to contend with that lifetime after lifetime, we're having to vanquish in some way or transmute, transfigure, right? We would just be, not moving through space and time. We would be in like a still point or stagnancy or like the fishbowl, just swimming around in circles. Right. Not knowing that there's anything else different than that. 
And some of us know that that's the point, I guess I just wanna say that my recent transmission is, it comes a point that that just isn't living then. That's not living. It's like a, a, a chronic or constant kind of astral plane that you can't leave. You know, we're like trapped in this in-between place where we're not really living, but we're not actually dead. We're just, it's existing. It's existing without the knowledge of yourself, without the knowledge of who you truly are. Nothing in this universe, nothing in this world excites me. You know, I, I, I mean, out and, and in, on an external plane, you know, they can wave all of the, all of the trinkets and all the gadgets and all of the, you know, people and all of the celebrities and all of the stories and all of this stuff, but it, it doesn't really excite me. And, you know, um, it's not, I'm not depressed. I should be, I should be really depressed. And I, you know, but I'm not, I never have been because, because the, the truth that exists within me is greater than any of those stories that they can conjure up or any of those external things that, I mean, and that's really the sad part about all of this is that we all carry that within us. We all carry, we all carry an aspect of the gods within us. You know, this, this isn't, this isn't, this, the, the, we're, we're living those, we're living manifestations of those things, you know? And not only that, but we can, we can have relationships with those gods. They, they, they can communicate to us. And that once we become more attuned to, to, those, to those energies, we can actually see how it manifests through us. And, and, and that's the greatest gift that I've been able to ever you know, experience. And, 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 and I think that that's just, that's just scratching the surface of something that's far greater than anything that I can even hope to imagine. You know, but I just know it's, it's there. And, and it's subtle, but it's there and we all have it, but we're not looking in the right direction. We're not being told that it's there. We're not being taught that it's there. We're not learning to appreciate that it's there. We're not learning to um, um, release that energy. We're not, we're, not, we're not taught to how to use that energy or to have a relationship with it. Or to energy. value it. Or to, well, and, and most importantly, to value it. And that's the problem is that there's no value placed within it. And I can't fix society. I, I can't do it. And you said it basically in, in, your, in your transmission that I listened to this morning, you can't help anyone else. You can only move forward in your own truth and re revel in, in, in your truth and, and, and manifest it in the greatest ways that you can. And, and, and that in itself will be enough for those who are also getting sick of living in the, you know, the oceanic fishbowl or whatever it is that we're, we're living in now. I mean, there has to be somebody who comes first, you know, in all of this. And you and I have probably been, you know, way ahead of, of, of the, of the uh, you know, uh, of, the, of the group that's, that's trying to move forward on this, you know, it, you know, and, 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 and I don't, I, I, I guess I've gotten to the point where I've stopped worrying about others, you know, and, and mm -hmm. uh, letting go and letting them have their mundane experiences and, um, and seeing how far that'll take them in their life until they get tired of it. You know, the, the way that we're designed is that we can't give away our truth. You can't give it away. You can only offer it to people who ask for your advice or ask for your truth. You can't, you can't do it any other way. No, they have to choose to let it in. And they have to don't. choose. They not, they have to, and that's the same way with, with, with the goddess Athena is that you cannot, um, you cannot come to that energy unless it's specifically aspected within your soul to allow it to come into your energy. What that also may mean is that there's been many lives seeking that truth. 
and that finally, you know, in this life, although, you know, this, I don't know how many more incarnations we're going to have left in this plane of existence, that, you know, that there it is, it's all, it's there in your chart, wherever you want to look for, she's there, uh, mm -hmm. but in this, in this life, you know, you have to look for these um, energies, or you have to feel these energies, and, and, uh, and, and, and become, you know, familiar with these energies in order to, to help ascend it. And uh, I mean, I, it sounds like um, predestiny. And I don't necessarily like to believe in predestiny or teach that concept, but there is, a, there is an optimal configura or the, uh, configuration that we all have when we came into this world to ex have certain experiences. Not everyone's gonna have a heroic soul. Many people will die on their knees. Yeah. you know, and, and many people will learn from that experience. And there's nothing I can do to save them or nothing you can do to save them. And that sounds, that sounds cruel. And I always grew up thinking that was cruel, but I'm at the point now where I, I just, I, I, I just, I can't go into that dark plane of consciousness or that mundane plane of consciousness, which is spiritless and lifeless I can't live there anymore. So do what you want in that plane of existence. I'm out of it. On that, what's the analogy of your fishbowl? I'm out of there. I, I'm leaving. I, I, and and it's and you also mentioned this. It's not a different place. It's a different frequency. You keep telling me that over and over and over again. And I said, you know, I told you a long time ago. I said, I don't know where I'm going anymore. I can't see that direction. And you stepped in and you said, the guys have been telling me, talking to me about this. You said it's not a place. It's a frequency, frequency. right? It's a, it's a, it's an energetic shift. It's the same place that we're at. It's just in a higher frequency. I've seen it in dreams, yeah. but I never knew what that message was until you said that. And I'm like, oh, that's what that is. Hmm. That's right. So, can you tell us a little bit more? Maybe I don't. I didn't get to the second half of what you were sharing about Athena, but please share what you were saying so that people can know her better and connect with her a little bit more. Well, so the, she's very much a part of what they call um, um, the, ed, the education of, of humanity um, and the ascension of humanity in Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. She is instrumental in that, in that, in that task. So <clears throat> there's something called the seven rays. And so I talk a lot about mystery schools and stuff like that. And quite frankly, I mean, they're, they're allegedly there, there are mystery schools, but they're, they're in the etheric realm or they're in, they're in a, a non-physical realm. Mm. So these, these go back to a, a masters of those schools that go back to the pre-Diluvian world of Atlantis and, you know, Lemurian, you know, but you know, don't, we don't want, you know, Atlantis, Atlantis went awry, but it did exist for 50,000 years in relative peace. So there, there was a, there was a priest caste that was associated with that, who were genuinely, you know, um, 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 you know, benevolent beings. And so the, so the, the, the destruction of Atlantis, the fall of Atlantis, um, meant that these masters would reincarnate in sequential lives. So they, they would reincarnate into, sequ into subsequent lives. So, that, so their presence to us is, is known. It's been known throughout history as to who these people are, right? And so you know, name a great person and they're most likely connected to the mystery schools that go all the way back to the time of Atlantis. Wow. Now, this is not the same dark, occult, you know, Illuminati, baloney. This is not the same. It doesn't even really exist on a physical plane at this point. It may have in Jesus's time. It may, it, I would say that any group of people that are trying to ascend their consciousness can tap into that energy. And there may be leaders within that group that may have connections to those mystery schools. Those mystery schools definitely existed during the Greco-Roman period, but more, more strongly within the Grecian period, the Greco period, 
in the Roman period and the Egyptian period and all these other things, right? But but they were there, you know, they always were there. And so, you know, there's this concept of ascended masters that like the Buddha, for instance, um, right. is an ascended master. Jesus is an ascended master. Christ, Jesus Christ is ascended master. But, um, you know, so, 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 so they live a life for so long on the physical plane. <laughs> and they say, I can't swim in this fishbowl anymore. <laughs> ah. My God, <laughs> I taught you guys enough. You guys, you know, can carry on with the tradition, All right? So, you know, there's something really powerful about that because when you're, when you, when you, when you can connect to that energy, hmm. let's say you start out as a person who wants to make a difference in the world and you want, you're a truth seeker and you want to know the truth and you want your, you're, you're already uncomfortable with the confinements that are the conditions of your confinement that, you know, that you were born into and you want to move beyond that. And you realize that there's nobody going to, that's going to get me out of this. So I'm going to have to become a person that'll have to figure this out. And maybe some people can learn from what I've discovered, but you'll find in life that there are people who carry wisdom that's beyond your capacity. And that's what at the beginning of that essay, when I wrote about, you can learn wisdom, but it, it really has to come from um, grace exchanged between in yeah. uh, love between the pupil and the teacher. That's more than that, because you know when Jesus was on his was on his um, in his ministry and was healing people, his energy was imparted into all of the apostles. Yes. They were all doing, and they allegedly were they. It was oh, he was it was indistinguishable from the others when they were healing. No one knew where he really was. Some people said he was in all of them, or you know they couldn't tell. Right, right? so that. That principle is there within these, the, the, these, these, these seven essential mystery schools. And the idea is that you live sequential lifetimes and you, in, in one of those rays of consciousness, to learn, you know, what's the school? The school is the world. The school is the life that you're destined to live. You know, and there will be mentors within that life. And there may have been times where that was more of a, of a structured thing or, or an, an externalized thing. Because Paul had a mystery school. You know, you can say that Jesus's ministry was a mystery school. The, the Buddha had apostles. They all were learning from that source. So you start out as, as like a, a person that knows nothing. You're a neophyte. You're just, you know, and and it and it and it, and it you know, in a lot of these secretive schools or occult schools. Those people are abused, you know, and 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 there's there's lots of ritualistic abuse that goes on with those people that want to learn, you know, occult information, and that's not what I'm referring to. That doesn't happen in these in 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 this in this in the mystery schools that I'm talking about. That is not what that is. Right. Well, that's the polarity way, one, you're like losing your soul or, or, or surrendering right. that's it. That's a way of consolidating power into a hierarchical right. structure so that you can you know, enforce your you know, will or the will of whoever is the you know, head of that organization. You know, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the opposite. We're talking about the right. liberation of humanity. The liberation uh, yeah. and the empowerment. It has nothing to do with these occult organizations that everyone is becoming familiar with. This is different. This is on a totally different plane of existence. And yeah, so yeah. these people or these ascended masters, these Atlantean ascended masters or Lemurian, I, you know, I'm not even sure where they came from, but, but they, they are connected to the seven rays of consciousness or your seven chakras or the seven planetary system that rule us. You know, this is so beautiful. It's so it's so balanced. It's, it's so lovely to really be able to contemplate these things. You look at yourself as a rainbow, mm -hmm. right? You, because in this plane of existence, we have seven visible colors. We also have seven, seven notes, seven sound tones, right? The scale of, of, of music is, oh. is as on a scale of seven also, right? right. So we not only, we're not only, we not only have luminescence but we also have tone we also have a resonance right. 
right? That's supposed to be the divine feminine is the resonance mm. and the light is the divine masculine. Oh, nice. Right? Nice. So we, we have this, we all have this, right? And as we move forward and trying to seek the truth, we'll get to a certain point. That may take, I guarantee you it's taken, it takes many lifetimes for this. We may be at the point where that ends. I don't know. You maybe we'll 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 breach a certain or, or or go through a certain wall or barrier or breach a certain barrier where this information becomes far more accessible with less effort. I don't know, maybe. Mm. But what happens is is if you become initiated into the school or into this ray. Yes. You 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 become integrated with the master's soul. You take on the karma of the master's soul, and you also take on the dharma. And the dharma is when everything is in balance and you're living within the guiding principles of who you are supposed to be, who you're, what your what your true intention is. That's the dharma. And that's and that's also integrated or in, entangled isn't the right word, but ingrained within the teachings of the master, right? So now, who are the masters? And in one of the rays, uh, the master is um, is a is a is a being known as Hilarion. I love this name, Hilarion. So, what does it make you think of when you think of Hilarion? Hilarious. It's hilarious, and that's who he is. He is this absolute. This now, this is a master that goes back to the time of Atlantis. Very, you're not really one of the most popular people. You use the term hilarious, most people don't even know who you're talking about. But he's a master of what they call this, the fifth ray. And the fifth ray is, the, is called the emerald ray. Mm. And that is the heart. It's heart based. It's heart based energy. It's a love based energy, right? But it's also, it's also a little higher than the heart, too. So, so, there's, so who was hilarious in a, in a more recent life? was Paul, St. Paul of, of, of Saul of Tarsus. It was Paul of Tarsus. Wow. Right? That was who Hilarion is. That's Master Hilarion. He is, now, he is instrumental in trying to bring Christ consciousness into the world. You know, he was, I would say, I'd make the argument that he was the greatest of all of the apostles, was, wow. was Hilarion, because he had a vision you know, that was kind of like maybe beyond what the apostles were able to 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 have it and he saw that, that he actually was the first one to understand what unity consciousness was in that age wow. you know christ christed consciousness it's okay. beyond the body it's it's a unit it's well when everything comes into resonance we become one body right it's right christ in consciousness right now who is the patroness of the fifth ray, Athena. Mm. She's the goddess. So she is beyond the masters and the, you know, she's beyond the ascended master. She is like a constant. In, in, in our state of consciousness, we can't connect to anything higher than that. She is the greatest level of truth that we can know. And she is the one who stewards and who and and who and who and basically is, we can say the patron is the one who basically is the one who um, champions this cause. Now she's also associated with the violet ray, which is called the seventh ray, and and this is really kind of really hilarious. I can use the term hilarious, but um, Sir Francis Bacon was who is he? Um, he well let me explain to you who sir francis bacon was so so he was saint germain oh saint germain is the keeper of the violet flame he's the ascended master of violet flame now is this true hey listen i'm only conveying to you the mythology of all of this i can also speak to you if you ever want to speak to it in a more in-depth way that the synchronicities that connect me to this are beyond probability. Mm. So in many ways, I, I, I know what I'm speaking about. So 
um, Saint Germain becomes this man named Sir Francis Bacon. And Sir Francis Bacon, well, not a lot of people know him. I mean, he was like this, he was like this raving genius, right, of the of the Renaissance of, of, of the 1500s or 1600s, whenever he lived. And so he was like this mathematician and astronomer wow. and astrologer and philosopher and, and, uh, and um, you know, you name it, he did it. He was like this poly scientist. Well, he was also a very uh, influential writer. And, um, and so he was also supposedly the son of Queen Elizabeth, mm. the Virgin Queen, who was not supposed to have any kids. So he might have been the son of Queen Elizabeth. We, we're not exactly sure, but he was he was within the royal family, and so um, he um, wrote these stories, and he had no way of really disseminating this to the public. So he found this hack actor. And they created this this name called William Shakespeare, and so and so, and so this guy nice. was William Shakespeare, and he fronted Sir Francis Bacon's stories. Now there was no William Shakespeare. Wilhelm wow. William is derived from Will Wilhelm, and that means um, helmet, but it also means will. It also means guardian. It also means protector. You can say protector of truth, protector of of, of knowledge, protector of, um, of, uh, of light, right? So here he is. And then Shakespeare is a reference to Athena because when Athena was born, she came out shaking the spirit of her father. Whoa, I never, ever would have put that together, Paul, ever. Yeah. Well, and then on top of that, if you read any of, of Shakespeare's writings, he talks extensively about Athena as the greatest of all muses. She was his personal muse. And so, so she's involved in, in you know, in these, um, we would say, um, uh, you know, schools, these, 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 uh, these schools that, you know, that many of us are participating in or have participated in to help to ascend our consciousness. Right now, it's, a, it's the, both of those rays are very important in the transformation of humanity. The fifth ray consciousness or the emerald ray consciousness is involved in spiritualizing um, all this science and technology that we have. That's the that's the that's the function of that of that ray and all of the initiatives in that ray is wow. to is to bring um, spiritual truth or to it's not we're not throwing out the baby with the bathwater but we're we're integrating it all we're, we're trying to we're trying to um, bring this spiritual truth into that and the Athenian energy is a very large part of that. I don't think I was aware that of her presence quite like you're describing, but it's so beautiful and it makes perfect sense now. And I'm just kind of, again, when you hear new information, some things don't resonate and that's, that happens to all of us. But when it does, sometimes it takes time, almost like sand sifting in between some pebbles in a jar, right? It has to settle in there. And I'm listening to you and letting Athena kind of move deeper into my awareness it is like a coming home when you have these reunions, when you have these visits again with the muse, with this, I, I, I almost wanted to use the word oversoul and that would probably be incorrect, but the way you describe how she might be this ascended master, but the Patronus, I think you said. She's not the ascended master. She is a constant. She's, she is, she, there's nothing, there's nothing that we could, we could ever be able to determine within our state of consciousness that's above her she is she is, is it like an over soul or different i mean you can get trapped in language and i don't want to get us tangled but i well, the god way is a god a god is a god it can't be defined anything more than that there's no over soul above it okay that so, helps me so i mean i have a higher self and and i have a very strong connection to the divine feminine and I could maybe elaborate upon that a little bit more as to what that energy is to me, but um, you know that that I think that is that's its own entity. Okay. Yeah. It had not entered my consciousness just the powerful, beautiful energy that Athena really is, and hearing you describe it, and then I connected with my heart center. She's woven throughout 
all of our mythology, but she's woven throughout all of our astrology. She's right here. Well, she's a weaver. She's a goddess of weaving. You can feel it. Yeah, she's integrated with everything. You can feel it. And it's a powerful, when everything in our lives, depending on your level of consciousness to see it, some people only see all the division and the infighting. They don't even see anything beautiful that's happening because it's so overwhelming. But if you open your vision, you can see amidst all that chaos and separation, there's also the weaving beautiful people are connecting people are finding podcasts like this people can find your gems and treasures in your articles and your posts that you do and you weave a whole bunch of incredible things talk about timeless it's like all these energies through time that connect deeper dots than most of us can connect you connect those dots paul and it helps us not only have a greater awareness and connect with our spirit and our our soul path who we are but you also connect us with that timeless energy that it's bigger than our little human self believes ourselves to be which is kind of like the one i like to bathe in those frequencies and i seek out things that fill me with that kind of energy and that's just another seed planting for people who would be listening to something like this because i know the tendency too is some people are finding this connection with themselves and with these deeper truths and this the logos and they're on their way home and they know they're on their way home. They know they're choosing above all else that they're going. They are leaving the fishbowl. But I know a lot of people who are in that journey, they feel like they're by themselves, right? It's, it can be isolating when you're going and it's like you in this journey with your little walking stick, right? And you don't have a whole team with you. And I think that's a very effective additional maybe it's an astral plane i'm not quite sure what it is that the 3d matrix it kind of creates for us that you are out there on your own but that's another part of the illusion that we also move past as we get deeper into the journey where we're connected whether we're physically in the presence of other people or not that's what something else we have to remember so we're not separated from this goddess support it's right there you and i paul are right here right there are many of us even though it looks like fewer and fewer are choosing or have chosen to break away from the old school the old 3d education or conditioning that they were giving us there are many of us there are many of us and i want to say it dawned on me in the last two days i can't pinpoint it was like one of those you know just kind of the whispers that come in from spirit that i think I'm experiencing something in the last few days to a week's time. I can actually feel that it is getting easier. More of us that know are impacting those who don't, right? It's shifting. It's very subtle still. And there's more events coming that will help this process, right? But just as a consciousness, there's enough of us that are breathing the new oxygen, the new prana of the new earth that's a frequency more than it's a destination right the more of us that are breathing in that new world in the age of aquarius and not trying to swim in the waters of the kind of prison planet of earth of the 3d matrix i can feel something is very subtly shifting of course we just went through february 22nd 2022 which was pluto's return and i can't speak to that but i know i've read enough about it that that seems connected. The last time there was a Pluto's return was 1776. Is, is that true? Around, approximately, yes. It's coming back to the to our birth the, to the country's birth chart, or you know, the birth point the, where it was when, at 1776. Where Pluto was is now 360 degrees back to where it was. Countries rarely survive that transition. Yeah, they, and, and before that was the Reformation. Whoa. So it's right, big. That's huge. So something huge is destined to happen. Um, I just wish they would get on with it. I know, right? <laughs> it's it's so, all this. Right. Well, and to be at the that leading edge, somehow I can feel that it's less hard it's more accessible. It's less hard to make the changes. Like it's just like the, 
it's, it is more accessible. We don't have to fight as hard for it. Those who have been doing the arduous work of paving the way in this way, in a consciousness, in a field and fabric of an energetic universe, we've been making way for this to land inside us and inside our, this planet in this realm. I can just feel like something softening on the very subtle planes. Of course, there's also some very action-oriented things that are going to happen. Like you said, countries often don't survive. There's going to be many elements, many layers to how this all plays out. But I think, um, I think we have crossed through a threshold of how sleepy can sleepy get, right? <laughs> That's a question, right? And, and, and also how much that a number of us and more, more are activating and awakening. We know that I just, there's no life force for me there, that the, the fishbowl's timeline is pretty much complete. And I think they said in the transmission that the fishbowl is like drying up. I think at least on, on the serpent's servants, that's hard to say serpent's servants, if you ever try to say that. The serpent's servants, um, you know, their ways and all their agendas and plans are drying up. So the, the water's becoming vapor, right? That they, they've been creating this whole world and so i'm i have to say myself as much as there can be a sea of darkness that humanity still must go through and it, the only reason it's hard is because people keep turning away from what is theirs to do it's like what you said you gave that great example that if that boogeyman or whatever the demon is 12 or 20 feet tall and, and then it becomes an inch yeah, it has no power over us. But when we keep avoiding looking at it because we think it's like the scariest thing under the proverbial rug and we've been protecting ourselves all this time to we've made it through other lifetimes by not looking. So people are playing out that same pattern. Don't look, don't look, don't look. Just keep your head down and keep going. That's not working anymore. So we are going to have to look at it. But it's it's so amazing that when you do, if, if, you, if a, more of humanity just would, it would be banished. It would be cleared out and we could enter as a frequency, as a consciousness, a whole new playing field. And for me, that's what I can see in that visionary kind of way. It's like, like Athena. Was it right? Was Athena you were saying was the vision she can see? There was nothing that could be hidden from her because she could see so far. Well, that's true. So, so that, that was another aspect we should talk about is that and might tie into something you were saying today also. So uh, I that I listened on your transmission today. So um, uh, the, the the Gnostic Bible talks about um, it's called the Nash Hamadi, uh, the Nash Hamadi, and um, in the Nash Hamadi um, there's a book called the Secret Book of John or the Apoc Apocryphal of John, Secret Book of John. I, I highly recommend it. It's a it really goes through the Genesis story, Ooh. but it goes through it from, from a more enlightened perspective. And nice. so it's literally as Jesus is talking to John and he's telling him what this, what, you know, that you're really in this prison and that the, the, this tree of knowledge of good and evil was, um, was hidden from you. And, and then, and then, you know, the, this idea that the serpent enticed Adam and Eve to eat from the apple from the that tree of, but it literally says in that in that in that book, Jesus says this emphatically. He says, "I made them eat from this tree. I made them eat. I made them eat from this tree." Wow. So, so you know, I mean, there's a, and then he goes on to say that he is an eagle perched on the branches of the tree, of the knowledge of good and evil, of being able to discern truth from non-truth. He's an eagle, you know, and so the, this idea of the transformation into the eagle, right, from we talked about from the scorpion into this golden eagle or phoenix, and there's many different ways to interpret this, mm -hmm. you know, but um, he was this, this, this um, majestic noble being that is in the tree, right? Athena is interesting because the animal that represents her is the owl. Right? It's the owl. So the owl is like the nocturnal form of the eagle. It's the same wisdom, it's the same majestic bird, 
but it can see into the night. It can see into places that no one else can see into. Nice. So, so, so now you have both the night and the day covered, right? And so, and it may be also the fact that um, she is a being that's stealth, that lives within the darkness of the soul, not so much in the light of the physical realm or the light of our consciousness. I'd say that she always existed in the subconscious part of our soul. She was just right there. That's how I experience her. She's mm. just right there. I can, I can hear her whispering sometimes. That, that's where she's at, you know? She's subtle and she's this muse. And, then, and so, so that's, that's where her energies exist. It, 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 it existed in this, in this form, this, 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 this more subtle form of consciousness. That's Athenian energy. So, and I'm sorry, where was it we going with this? You were asking me. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I was asking you something about Athena. Is that maybe the visionary that she was this, that she could see deeper? And you did speak to that. She, right. And she could it's see like an deeper. omnivision in a kind of way. Beyond any beyond anyone else's capacities to be able to see that. So and isn't you know, that what we need to transcend these time? Because we're living in this obfuscated, you know, uh, yes. limited soul sight she can see beneath the waters she's she's also has connections to water she's so she so she 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 has the connection she has a capacity to empower us to see deep within places where it's difficult for us to look at least at the beginning but once we wow. once we exercise that i mean everything that's been occurring to me is like watching a train wreck in slow motion you know, I mean, you still, you, I saw it coming years ago. It's like, all of this is going to happen. I've given lectures on it. I have the proof. I mean, I don't want to say I told you so, and, and I can't say that because people didn't have the vision, but really it was so obvious. It, was, it wasn't even funny how obvious this was. If you read my essays from two or three years ago, they're prophetic. I mean, they're so right on based on just looking at the astrology and everything else that I was able to gather from what was going on and interpreting it in a different way in a, in a, in a, in a, in a way that, that the deception didn't affect me. Yes. And you can see exactly where all this was going. Right. That site, I think the guides have been seeding this for the last four or five years at the very least, again, in my, in the transmissions that come through me, They've been talking about this clear soul sight, this clear vision. You can't have obscured vision and see deeper into the matrix that is working to enslave you in a prison planet, which has been, I, I would call it the shadow side or of the Piscean age, but that is a, one of the possible ways that that manifests and it has for a, a humanity. And you know, my partner and I and, and another person was involved. We're still in the process of making a documentary film. COVID's come into the mix of that, but we make progress in the ways that we do. But the title is Freeing an Incarcerated World. And it's no, it, it's so much even more relevant now than it was. And I that's what happens too. The story changes the more we keep evolving and growing through what the world is dealing with, our ideas for what the film, you know, what's the central message that we're saying, it keeps expanding. But that was a pretty expansive title, and I didn't realize how relevant that was going to be pre-COVID when we made that we made a trailer. So many of us know that there is a liberation going on, and those that are sleeping don't know that they're incarcerated. So you, in that way, you have the duality, right? And yet, I think these are the signs of our time, and it's our vision. It's these expansive gifts that con that breathing, the breath. And it's also allowing our vision, giving ourselves permission to see deeper things that we may not have wanted to see, but not wanting to see means that you will drown in the events and not know what's up or down in, in a kind of a sea of confusion, which becomes more uncomfortable than looking. When you're drowning in it, that, then finally it's come to your shores. You know what I mean? Those floodwaters have come to your shores and now you're saying, well, it's far more uncomfortable to not look than to just go through this thing, than to wake up. Yeah, and that's what I was gonna say. It's, it's not a question of seeing something that you don't wanna see. You have to wanna see it. 
You can't, mm -hmm. there's no other way that you can do that. And the only way that that happens is how you just explained it. When, you know, when it finally affects you on a, on a, on a, at a deeply personal level and you, and, and, and you have no other choice but to capitulate, not to capitulate, but to develop an inner impulse yes. that's stronger to, than your, your fear of not wanting to see it. You have to want to see it. You know, well, but, and the inversion of our whole world, if we go back to Genesis, and I know we're going to round this out, but this is fascinating to me. There's so many things that we talked about that I deeply feel and resonate with is when Adam and Eve in that moment ate from the tree, whoever ultimately orchestrated that there was inside them this feeling of they were naked and they needed to hide. And we've been hiding from ourselves ever since not wanting to know our power, not wanting to look at the choices we made that, you know, slippery slope slid us down into a more devolved or descended consciousness. We have to be willing to look at those things and say, okay, so we did that, right? As metaphors, right. so we ate from the apple, but it doesn't right. mean we have to like sentence ourselves in a prison planet out of our own guilt, right? Out of our own shame. <sighs> To say, I have to stay here because this is the fishbowl that I deserve. No. Well, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, um, the, the stern patriarchal, our, our patriarchal God said, thou shall not eat, you know, from the tree. And so we ate from it. Do you think that God really didn't think we would eat from it? Of course, of course. But that's the one thing you can't it. have. It's, you can have anything you want, but yeah. not this one yeah. thing. I mean, Think about it. It's ridiculous. We, it's all self, it's all self uh, exiled. We, we exiled ourselves. We're yes. punishing ourselves for something that God knew very well we would do, right? Or whatever that energy was. And so, oh, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, and so we were punished and now, you know, we, he would, we were withdrawn from 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 Eden and and you know all these other usurping energies came in to torment us, right? Because that's our punishment because we're so bad. Please stop it. It's this over is with. part of the leaving the fishbowl. God wanted you to eat from that tree. That, that, that's what Jesus said. I, you know, I made them eat. I did because because that was our movement away towards this stern patriarchal God to um, uh, finding the truth with the light of the, the light of truth within ourselves. And, and that's what eating the, from the fruit that they're able to discern the difference between truth and non-truth from deception and truth was, was, was freeing us from an imprisonment. Quite frankly, I'd be bored living in Eden. Right. You're sitting around, not doing anything. I mean, right. after a while, you, you know, I mean, even having a, you know, the greatest sex in the world becomes boring after a while. Like, come on, let's do something else. Let's build a house. Come on, I, this is enough. I can't take it anymore. That's in a, 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 a transmission I received from source gave me that story um, and, and three little vignettes. But there was the middle one was that it was too perfect. It was so abundant and amazing that it got tired we got tired of it like it wasn't we weren't growing and when the soul knows it's not growing and the stagnancy settles in when you have some level of consciousness still intact you know it's time to go yeah i mean i i think we have a long way to go before we get back to that state you know but but the other thing too is it is that it was being provided for us in that yes in that sense and, you know, the worst way to ruin a child is to give them everything they want. You know, and it's just, it's just a fact. So, you know, you, you're, you're a better parent if you provide boundaries and structure for them than just give them everything they want because they turn out to be terrible 99.9% .9 of the time. So the same thing, if everything is being provided for, you've got nothing to do, then, you know, you're bored. You're, you're just freaking bored. And so, so the, the, the fact is, is that we will be, be develop that godlike capability. That's where we're going. So that we won't be bored because we will be creating our own abundance in a very artistic and, 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 and fruitful way. And, 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 and there's, the sky's the limit. There's no limit 
on what we can do with that energy. I mean, it, it, it won't be confined to this little planet. It will be a force within the cosmos mm. that will be looked at as, as, a, as a blessing. Because that's really where we're going with all of this. It is where we're going. And that's what's so important for people to remember that, yes, there are some storms. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, it's like, all right, already, how much longer? And a lot of that, how much longer is part of the the biblical, the, the, the source timing, divine timing. And part of it is us evolving where enough of us are awake and ready to receive that which we think we desire, right? There's this, we have to evolve into and vibrate at the frequency, at the level you need to, to exist, to live and sustain new life in this new world. And, and so I think we may have talked about this, but someone I've heard say, James Gilliland has said, we have to become frequency specific to the new earth. And many of us are at that place of frequency specific. And I think when we look back and say, why is it, why is everybody so far way back? Right. I think our job in some ways now is to keep going, is to feel that softening and the thinning of the veils we've heard about for so long, but really step into the visioning of it as a frequency, even if it doesn't mean you go back to school or you know very tangible things you do in your life, I think just allowing yourself to sit and be with yourself in the new consciousness that you know has already found you in your heart. And when we spend time there, we can find a kind of timelessness where we're not pressed to wish or long for that more people were awake with us we can actually, it's like, it's like the Garden of Eden in that sense, it provides everything we need if we'll be there. And if each of us would be there in that higher frequency, more and more of the time, even though storms are going on all around us, but you know, in all the shows of the Avatar, especially Avatar, The Last Airbender, things are going on. Sometimes he has to just go into the Avatar state, even though it's chaotic, because he knows that's where his gifts are. And he's going to access that. And then he's going to do the next thing he's going to do. So maybe I'm talking about we all have to become these avatars. We already are. We have to let ourselves be that right now and um, and more and more let time slip away of how things are unfolding, even though it looks like it's ratcheting up out there because it certainly is. But that's part of, I think, the larger divine plan of this. You know, People have said when source allowed this whole process to unfold, where we were going to go into separation consciousness, source already knew the end right? So now there is this kind of the ending of that whole massive theater we've been in. And it's got to have like a good movie. It's got to have, it's like rising action, crescendo moments, good guys, bad guys. And then after a good movie, after all the stuff that goes on, you're like, oh, and you just feel like you lived like a whole lifetime when you watch that film for an hour and a half. Well, we've been living it for lifetimes and now we are, we're like at the very end, it's so good. So I think we can also find ways to appreciate it if you have a little bit of vibrational perspective of what this really is. And for some of us, this is a movie that has to play out this way for some people who are still sleeping. For those who are more awake, we're the ones holding the light and channeling the logos inside us for what is all the gorgeous things that are coming. And both can be true in the same moment. There can be all the chaos and cataclysms of the crescendo of that movie that people believe is is deeply real right but then there are those of us can be witnessing all of that seeing the storms they're all around us too but we know that's a necessary part of a movie that has to play out so that people can move into the next level of human consciousness yeah it's a powerful time a lot is asked of us yeah uh, yeah there is uh, i i I feel like I'm kind of like up against a wall right now and I can't go any further and way in the background are there some people coming but I still don't see them they're still not hit their horizon yet do you know the people have been saying this which I didn't because I haven't read the bible like I know some people have and they can do a better job than I can of quoting it that when God moves in the biblical ways that God moves it's in nearly an instant it's in kind of like a 24 hour period when god acts god acts and the the planet has changed forever right like the floods the noah time like when it happened it, it happened or the red sea it was like you know they didn't part the sea god didn't part the sea and then the sea was parted and they were free 
Well, they waited a long time for that too. Of course, they had some journeying after that, after they got to the other side, but, but still God acts in these very um, swift moments and um, events actually. And so I think we are, we're due, this planet is kind of due for some significant overnight um, 24 hour kind of period. That's at least what I'm hearing some other people say, and that resonates for me. Okay, so yeah, I get it. And I've been hearing that message for years. It's right around the corner, right oh. around the corner. It's just about this big event's gonna come, it's coming. <clears throat> so let me tell you this other story. And this is the story of Prometheus. Okay. So Prometheus, you know, not only was chained to the rock, I mean, he was chained to the rock, that was the last thing that happened to him. But um, he had a brother named Epimetheus. And Epimetheus means hindsight. What hindsight. parents do that? Prometheus and Epimetheus? Epimetheus? Yeah, so he was useless to everybody. He just, he just hindsight, right? So, uh, so, the, so the gods, in order to, to, to torment humanity, um, they created a perfect woman, beautiful woman, enchanting woman. And they gave her as a gift to the brothers. And I don't know who marries her, one or the other. They both do. I don't know. Um, so, um, and, and they have this wedding for them. And they give her a box. And in this box, this is beautiful box, but they say, don't open the box. And her name was Pandora. That's so they give her this, this Pandorian box. And uh, she asks Prometheus, you know, what should I do? I, and, if, and if she asked Prometheus, he said, don't open the box. But maybe she asked Epimetheus, I don't know. And he says, I don't know, <laughs> open it up, who knows? <laughs> So she opens the box. Now, what was in the box was blessings along with curses. Mm. I, I like to think of it as is like a mixed bag of, of ast dark astral forces mm. along with, with some blessings, right? It was a mixed bag. And so they open the box and they all escape. And so you can imagine them as dark astral specters. And that's the explanation for why we went from a, um, you know, a, a, a peaceful world to one that's full of pestilence and war and conflict and mm. all these other things, because that was in the box. But she closed the box just in time to trap one blessing. And that one blessing was hope. One blessing is hope. Now, you may think that's a good thing, but Friedrich Nietzsche said, that's the worst and most evil thing ever devised. He said that because people are waiting perpetually for things to change without any basis of that as being part of their reality. He mm -hmm. said hope is the most evil of all evils because wow. of that. Mm -hmm. So there's something to be said for that because there is this thing called hopium and we just keep hoping and hoping that prosperity or, you know, our salvation is just around the corner. That's the wrong way to look at it, in my opinion. And that was the wrong way that many people would say, you must cataclyze it yourself. You must become it. You, hope is not part of my, I mean, it's there all the time. I, I always say it, but it really isn't part of my consciousness. Faith is different. Hope is you're kind of useless. So, um, you know, I mean, I always say hope for the best and I, I get all of it, but you have to create your own opportunities. You, that's where the heroic soul comes in. You get sick of waiting, you know? So they'll keep enticing you, man. If you listen to those videos that they're crafting, oh, we're just, the, it's all gonna be, you know, the next month, it's gonna be amazing. And is it really going, is what really has changed? A little bit shifted, but has it really been that, big God moment where everything just changes. I, I'd like to see it. I hope to see it, but I don't know if I actually will see it. Uh, well, I like how you distinguish between hope and faith because there's a spiritual power inside, I guess maybe the logos inside the faith of those who step up and practice it and live it and journey inside it and i think i don't know if i'm going to get this right i don't think i have it in front of me the the words from the last transmission that the guides gave they gave a little formula and i think they said spiritual vision plus spiritual fortitude equals faith 
And I thought that was really interesting because it's an there's an active inside each person part where hope is like something outside myself is going to come in and save the day, some external hero, some external savior, so hoping that it's just going to get better by some magic of the cosmos. And we know it's a living energetic universe. So I don't want to it, it, you know, insinuate in any way that it isn't, but there's something about when they spoke those words that I really felt that I think it was spiritual vision. That's when I, and I know they said spiritual fortitude, but when you couple these things together, it's a living faith. If most of what things are, they're the, the illusion of faith in maybe an inverted version of hope where people are giving their power away, we have to be discerning which this whole thing, it maybe seems after a conversation today that a lot of what the Adam and Eve creation story was about was for us to learn this lesson. I don't think there's any accident that we've been in this cycle of separation consciousness all this time. Clearly at soul level, a lot of us wanted to have some of this experience, but um, we are coming back into this time of this discernment, which is very empowering. We're claiming the gifts of that for those that can. And I like discerning the difference between hope and faith. And I live more in a place of faith that is grounded in frequencies and visions that I see. And I was also going to say, when you talked about hope, for me, the other um, aspect of that is a knowing. When you have the knowing of the knowing, or my friend Renee Tainter talks about the unknown known, or I say the known unknown, we, we both have versions of it, but the unknown in the known, we already know what the unknown is. And that's when you can have a faith because it's your memory. It's your memory of creation that you already know how that timeline ahead of us is playing out. When people are giving hopium and say, well, and they always move the marker and then this date, and then this date, and then this date, that can make you crazy. And that's also part of truly, I think in some ways, whether it's on purpose and, and whoever they serve, if it is on purpose, it's to shut down hope. It's to make people feel more de dejected and powerless that each time the marker moves further and further out and it's never getting better. It just makes them feel, they lose faith. They lose that compass inside. And I think those of us that our compass can be faith, if our compass can be this knowing that we all do know, all of us know how this goes, and those that can know deeply and be active in their consciousness about the knowing that we know, even if we think we don't know, and the guides have spoken to this, we do know. We already know what we think we don't know. We're just remembering it. So I think when we can play with these vibrations, it can be more empowering. And if we don't play with them consciously by the conditioning of our world, it's gonna snuff out hope, which can be dashed. It can be squashed, right? But faith is something you have from within. Hope is something you're looking outside, hoping that it's going to happen. It's a wish out there instead of a strength from in here. Different. Yeah, the hope is based on external factors that you seemingly have no control over. Right. Right. So it is It is kind of like in maybe related to fate. You yes. Know. But, but, um, we have control, we, are, we, are, we do have influence and control over the direction that our lives take. Hmm. So, I mean, I could say, I hope that enough people wake up so that this nightmare ends sooner than later. I do have that, but that's the only hope I really have. But, but the fact is, is that deep within my heart, I know what the outcome is, just like the gods know what the outcome yes. is. Yes even though my ego is kind of always at odds with it because it still picks up enough of the, of the, of the um, vapors of, of conditioning forces that are out there that I don't, I, that I, you can't hide yourself completely from it. That mm -hmm. when you hear something, you go, ah, you know, I mean, uh, you know, you know, that, that it looks like evil is still, you know, you know, making its plans and doing its, 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 its dirty work. But the fact is, is that, <clears throat> We are we 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 don't we don't really don't need hope. I mean, we're 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 moving we're moving into a direction that deep within my soul, I know what the outcome is. It's I think the outcome. knowing is part of that emerging I was talking about. I think there's something inside many of us, and more of us are coming into the awareness of that that we do know. 
And so while it looks like it, we don't know how this is going to play out, but we do. And I think as more of us magnetically maybe connect on some other, you know, a deeper, more etheric plane, I think it's, it's helping the collective who doesn't even know that they're being prayed over as much as they are. Um, but the, I think there's something that's leading and guiding all of us into this greater union at some level, but obviously there's things that we have to go through. And when you've had all these slices of, and threads of separation for so long, we're gonna feel the squeeze in our ways of like so many different energies on the planet right now. But the ones who can be in the knowing from within, the ones that who can be in the faith from within, the ones who can be in this beautiful, the, the, the sounding of language of the knowing, because that's what comes through your writings, Paul, and your messages. You know, when you really go into the muse and you must muse with Athena, she's probably there with you, writing with you. When we do these things, we bring a neutrality and a strength um, inside us that transcends whatever the lower astral plane is playing out around us. There's there, it's, it's beyond words really to, to explain that kind of faith and knowing and that presence. It's a presence inside us. Yeah. It's a knowing. It's, it's, it's a knowing. It's, it's a knowing. Yeah. It's, um, and, and, and there's, that there's a process and yeah, you can say that you have to have faith within the process, but, um, I mean, it's even more than that, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, faith is, is, is too weak of a word now. I mean, it, it's just, it's a certainty that, that, that I at least know where I'm going. I, I mean, and that's the sad part is I don't know if everyone else is going there either. Um, it's, it's almost like a point in time where there will be departures with loved ones or people or souls that we've traveled with for a long time and, and maybe and we have to we have to come to to terms with the fact that they can't act um, upon anyone else's um, um, let's say behalf but their own. They they they. It's not what I want from somebody else, but it's what they want. And if this person wants to take that journey, no matter how close I am to that person, then you have to let go and let them take the journey. You know, and and I think that's. I think that's that's true for virtually all of our all of our intimate relationships right now is in a state of flux and we need to I mean I'd like to travel with others that I still love but am I not you know I, I don't know I, I don't know if will they still be around or not and but there'll be another opportunity or portal to be able to go through and I'm certain there'll be other souls there also so right you know, you know I do have this sense of it of a family that I've never met is, has always been there around me, but I, I, I rarely get a chance to see them. And I think it's time that, mm -hmm. I think it's time that, that, that uh, I, I come back to union with them. Yes, I like that. I think that's the feeling that we're also feeling when you let go of what is no longer aligned or maybe hasn't been aligned for some time we make room for the people that, or the, you know, the souls that we are aligned with. And that is part of that going home and there's a bigger departure and there's a letting go and trusting something much bigger than what we can see, but the knowing is leading us, right? That knowing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you we man. always journey. And um, I want to thank, I want to thank our listeners for joining Paul and I, because we do, we go deeper uh, into some of these energies. And if you can think about these conversations that we have, yes, there's pieces and stories and characters and things that come to the surface. And I love that about what we share, Paul. And then I also want to invite people. I just am going to keep being a messenger. Listen for the energy inside what we're talking about. Listen to the words, but listen for the energy because the energy doesn't lie, people do, right? The energy doesn't lie, we could say the biblical serpent does or the archons do or you know, people who are somehow distorted in some way do. But if you really, really listen for the energy in the words of what we're saying and then of anybody else that you listen to, you can get distracted by the words. And some people do that even with my transmissions periodically. Somebody will write in and say, why did you say this instead of this? Or occasionally that happens and what i just keep inviting people is to say 
but listen for the bigger energy. If you get distracted on one word there, you might miss the whole point of what could have really been a blessing for you. So listen for the energies of what we're talking about, which have to do with liberation and empowerment and the power of choice and the mentors that are all around us and the blessings that are there for us. And yes, in Pandora's box, some other curses were released as well. But if we can have awareness of those energies and keep spending our time in the energies that we really do desire, that's where the power comes from. That's where our life force can come from. And we need that right now in these times. And that helps our discernment to feel more fortified in a journey that still feels fairly uncertain. And yet there's a certainty inside us that knows where our feet and our whole energy field is moving. So join us for the next podcast, certainly next month, and it's already nearly March. It's kind of crazy that that's coming up so fast. Paul, can you tell people the name of your website, where they can find it? Beyondthesoulsmeridian.org. Beyondthesoulsmeridian.org. And you can find a lot of my messages at YouTube at Color the Magic and Whole Soul Mastery and a lot of other platforms. And of course, Frequency Writer to get the text of the transmissions that I publish and post. So until next time, be safe in the journey. You know, feel the faith and that knowing within and use that beautiful discernment that we entered this realm in the first place to retrieve, right? To know deeper. So we'll see you next time, everyone. Blessings.